Hey everyone, welcome back. I hope you all had a great Thanksgiving. As I record this, it's actually Wednesday, and I won't be celebrating Thanksgiving with my family, as I moved 10 hours away and I just didn't want to do the drive this year. I will be going for Christmas, just not Thanksgiving. So since I'm not celebrating Thanksgiving, I decided I would take an extra day off to relax and maybe go get some food somewhere else. So I'm doing a compilation today. I know it's not a normal video, but I hope you still enjoy the stories. I'll return back to the normal uploads tomorrow. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the night with all of these spooky stories. If you're all ready, let's begin. And remember, to always, stay hungry. I'm a 24-year-old female with a 2-year-old son and a 10-month-old son. I work in the medical field, so on my days off, my boys stay home with me instead of going to daycare. It was a Tuesday morning, and we needed to go to the grocery store. I load up the kids, and we drive to our nearest Walmart. I never had anything out of the ordinary happen to me when going to the store with my kids but I tend to be extra paranoid anyways. We get to Walmart, and I walk in while pushing my boys in the cart, and I then see a man. To be honest, he looked like he could be homeless. He was wearing dirty, torn-up clothes, and he seemed to just be wandering around near the entrance doors. As I was getting the boys situated, I watched him ram a shopping cart into one of the fridges by the checkout area that holds the different drinks for what seemed to be no reason. It made a loud sound that caught me off guard, but I kept my head down and continued to push the car past him and continue on my way. As I'm making my way through the store, checking off items on my list, I had started to see the man more and more throughout the store. The odd thing was that he was still just walking around with nothing in his hands. Again, I didn't think much of it, but I made sure to stay alert. I finished getting all of the stuff I needed, and I started to make my way to the self-checkout area. As I started ringing up my items, I noticed the man as well come up to the checkout area. He walks up to my cart, and he then stops a few feet away, and he's just standing there, staring at my kids and I. I didn't exactly know what he was doing at first, but I immediately felt my stomach drop. I made some eye contact with him a couple of times, thinking he would walk away, or at least act like he was doing something, but he still just continued to stare as I was checking out with my groceries. At this point, I was starting to become very, very anxious, and so were my boys. He had a look on his face which I can only describe as pure evil. There was literally nothing behind his eyes. I wanted to get the attention of a worker, but I also didn't want to let the man know that I was going to say something, as I didn't know what he was going to do. Had it just been myself, I would have been much more confrontational, but given that it was just me with my two young boys, I was much more nervous about the situation. I finished checking out my stuff, and I then realized that I left my wallet in my car. Of course, because this is the perfect time for something like that to happen. So I put all of my bags in my cart, and I then pulled the car to the nearest worker. I then explained to them that I had left my wallet in the car, and I needed to go get it. But the man behind me was making me extremely uncomfortable. Thank goodness the worker had noticed the man and his odd behavior, and then grabbed a male worker to walk with me out to my car to go get my wallet. We walked out and we then briefly talked about the man and how he was acting. The worker had said that he had never seen him there before, but that he had been in the store all morning acting very weird. There was nothing they could do about kicking him out though, as he wasn't doing anything illegal. We got back into the store, I pay for my things, and the man was just standing by the entrance doors, once again just staring at us. The Walmart worker walked me back out to my car, and he helped me load up all my groceries and made sure we were safe, which did make me feel much more comfortable. Nothing else ended up happening with the strange man. 
I know this probably isn't the scariest story that has been submitted, but you have to remember, I was at the store with just me and my two young boys, and it really freaked me out, as I have no idea what the man's intentions truly were. I don't know if he was planning to steal my groceries as I walked out to my car, or if he was going to try and steal me and my kids, but I truly feel like he was actually planning something. Needless to say, I won't be going back to that Walmart by myself anymore. I work at a Target in the state of Washington. A lot of crazy stuff has happened in this Target, but this has been the most scariest thing to have ever happened to me. Something to keep in mind while I tell you this story is I'm an 18 year old female. I'm 5 foot 1 and I'm more on the chubbier side, so I don't really catch the eyes of guys. For privacy reasons, I'll call myself Emily. Anyways, I work in the clothing department in the fitting rooms. I basically just keep the fitting rooms clean, making sure no one's shoplifting, organizing clothes, and running back and forth from customer service. I usually work night shifts, so basically until we close, which is at 10 p.m. The night is going pretty slow, and I've caught up on everything, and the store was pretty empty at the time. So I decided to organize the accessories area to pass time. I'm organizing the bags, when I noticed a man looking through the rings. He was a tall man with tan skin, dark hair, and he had on black jeans and a black jacket with a yellow t-shirt underneath. This is actually important for later. Now at first, I didn't think much of him. I just thought, oh, he's probably shopping for his girlfriend or something. We made eye contact, but I looked away to not make it awkward. He then comes up to me, and he asks, Excuse me, which rings do you think are nicer? He shows me these two pairs of rings. One was gold, and the other was silver, with diamonds on both. I just told him my honest opinion, and I said gold. He looked at me with a very kind of creepy grin, then saying, Okay, thank you. I walked away after that and kept doing my thing. A couple of minutes pass, and I notice the same man hasn't left the area. I went from the bags area to now the hats, then the sunglasses. I had a very weird feeling then I was being watched and followed by this man, because everywhere I went, he was there near me. I felt uncomfortable, so I grabbed my cart, and I left back to the fitting room. I noticed him walking slowly through the woman's clothing behind me. I just honestly tried not overthinking it. I stood there waiting to see if he showed up, but he didn't. My coworker comes to the fitting room, whom we'll refer to as Carla. She asked me if everything was fine, and I then whispered to her about the man, and she then looked at me with a confused look. The man then walks past the fitting room. To give a brief description on the area, the fitting room is next to two areas. On the left side is the men's area, and on the right the plus size women's area. So basically the fitting rooms are in the middle. The men's area has a really big mirror by the fitting room. He walks into the men's area. I told her that was him, and she was like, Hmm, seems a bit weird. She stayed with me for a while, and she helped me organize the clothes. The man came back, and he starts trying on hats, asking for our opinions on them. Carla and I said they look fine. We were honestly very uncomfortable at this point and Carla had to go back to her area, so she left. Silence then started to hit. I was somewhat freaking out, but trying to keep myself busy. At this point, the man is just standing around like he's waiting for someone. He comes to my desk, now asking me random questions, like how my day is, when do I get off, and if random stuff still looks good on him. Every time I answered, he would give me a creepy grin, and no, I never did tell him what time I got off. I really tried my best to just keep smiling and acting like I was busy, just so he can go away. 
but he never got the message. Then, I noticed that he grabbed this black Levi's leather jacket. He puts the jacket over his original black jacket, and he looks at himself in the mirror. He comes close to me. If I walk out like this, will you snitch on me? He said, while giving me a smile. I froze, and I looked at him confused, then saying, Um, yeah, it's my job to. Plus, you'd probably get caught. There's cameras everywhere here. The man just looks down, then saying, Oh, that's too bad then. It's at this point that I didn't really feel safe being there, so I left the fitting room as quickly as I could. As I walked away, I was calling for the security on the walkie when I then spotted her. I explained the whole situation and I kept looking around frantically. Both of my team leads saw me and came to me quickly. We'll call them Alan and Andrew. Alan asked me what was going on and I then explained to them what had just happened. They asked me where he was now and I told him at the fitting room. I explained to them that I don't want to go back there until he leaves. They told me to go find Carla and stay with her. I went on my walkie and I called for Carla and I asked for her location. She told me that she was at the fitting room and I told her to come to the kids clothing section. I kind of just paced back and forth until she arrived. I asked her what happened and she said that she heard me calling for security and she went to the fitting room very quickly to look for me. Apparently the guy was still there and he was talking to her asking her random questions. That's when I called her, and she came here. We had waited around for what seemed like forever. It was getting to be about 9.45 p.m. at this point, and I was getting impatient. I then hear over the walkie, Hey, Emily, can you come back to the fitting room? And I just stood there scared as I looked at Carla. I'm sure. I'm on my way, I said. I walked back to the fitting room, and I saw my team leads. Alan was standing at the entrance of the men's fitting room, while Andrew was standing at the desk. I asked them what happened, and they then whispered to me that he was in there. I looked at the stall, and there he is, standing there doing God knows what. My team leads asked me what he was wearing before he got in there, and I told them. Five minutes pass and I then hear the fitting room door then open. I then ran into the woman's fitting room so he wouldn't see me. Hey sir, are you doing okay? Alan asks. The man just kind of stared at Alan and Andrew, then saying, Um, yeah, I'm fine. What's going on? Alan went on to explain how he was making my coworkers very uncomfortable with the comments and gestures he was making. I heard the man chuckle, and he then said, Oh, so the little bitch snitched, huh? Well, I'm gonna have to go fucking find her. That's when he then ran off and left the store. I stood in disbelief on what the hell just happened. My anxiety was overflowing like a can of soda now. I didn't know what to do, but I was frozen. My team leads comforted me, and they asked me if I was alright. After the clock hit 10 o'clock, we closed down for the night. My team leans made sure that a big group walked with me to my car. I was afraid, and I kept looking around the area just to make sure the man wasn't there. He wasn't, or so I thought. Once my coworkers left, I noticed in the distance at a bus stop the same silhouette of a man standing and watching me. I drove off as fast as I could, going home. I kept checking behind me every couple of seconds just to make sure that I wasn't followed. Ever since this night, I always carry pepper spray now, and I always pay attention to my surroundings. It's been two weeks since this happened, and thankfully, the man hasn't come back since. If you're the man listening to this, I want you to know you're the creepiest and craziest person that I've ever met while working. And I really hope I don't see you again. This happened when I was about 18 or 19. I'm a 5 foot 3, 95 pound female by the way, if that matters. 
I was working in a candy shop in my local mall. The mall used to be a nice place to hang out, but now it's pretty run down. There are lots of empty storefronts as well as homeless people and druggies that hang around outside. While working the sales floor one day, a cracked out looking homeless man entered the store. I greeted him and I handed him a sample as I did with everyone. He took it from me and he just stared at me blankly. I then asked him if I could help him find anything. No answer. He just kept staring at me. Weird, I thought, as I walked behind the candy counter and I went on with my day. The next day at work, I had the same encounter with this same creepy guy. He came in, took a sample, and he then just stared at me until he left. While he was staring at me though, I decided to look him in the eyes and they looked completely devoid of life. Just black nothingness and his eyes would glaze over like he was on something. They looked crazy. I ended up telling my managers all about this man and just how much he creeped me out and they totally understood. So whenever he would enter the store, I would go into the back room and my managers would deal with him. As the days went on, I kept seeing this man around more and more. Eventually my bosses banned him from coming into the store because he was creeping everyone out. However, there was one night that I was working with a manager from a different location who we'll call Jay for privacy reasons, who was unaware of this man and the whole situation. On this night we were fairly busy. There were maybe about 7-10 to 10 customers in the store, including manager Jay and myself. I was behind the main candy counter, which is a big glass full of our displays of candy, and Manager Jay was on the sales floor talking to customers and handing out samples. As I'm in the middle of helping a lady make a box of candy, guess who walked into the store? Yep, the creepy cracked out looking homeless man. As I saw him approach Manager Jay, I then said, oh fuck, under my breath because his eyes were locked onto me like I was his prey. When he walked inside, Manager Jay had her back turned to him, and he stopped right behind her, so that when she turned around, she bumped into him, and it startled her. She then tried to hand him a sample and asked if she could help him find anything. The answer he gave her still gives me chills to this day. Still staring at me, he lifts up his arms and points directly at me, then saying, Yeah, I want to solicit sex from this young lady. Manager Jay then said, I'm sorry, excuse me, what? Like she hadn't heard him so he would repeat himself. And he said it again, but louder and more aggressive this time. Yeah, I said I want to solicit sex from her. I just stood there in shock, not knowing what to think or say. I mean, this was the first time I'd even heard this man speak. When Manager Jay snapped out of being in shock herself, she then told him to get the fuck out of our store and immediately called security to then let them know all about the situation. Anytime he tried to enter the mall after that, the security guards would just take him outside. I thought this would be the last time I ever encountered him, but no. Just a few days after he told me he wanted to have sex with me, he found me outside while I was on my lunch break. I would always sit outside on the ground in front of the mall while I ate my lunch, and I remember specifically that I was eating spaghetti and meatballs that day. This creepy man tried approaching me, for what I don't know, but I know I wanted him nowhere near me. I started to panic on the inside because I realized I had left my knife in my purse, which was in the break room of the store, so I had no weapon on me in this moment and in my toughest voice, I then yelled at him, Stay the fuck away from me! This had absolutely no effect on him though. His eyes were still locked on to me, and he was approaching quickly. The only thing I could think to do was to stand my ground. I stood up and yelled at him again to stay the fuck away from me, and he then just stopped in front of me. Without hesitating, I then just threw the rest of my lunch at him, my spaghetti and meatballs and red sauce. It spilled all down the front of his shirt and pants. 
This seemed to snap him out of whatever trance he was in, which was probably drug-induced, and he then yelled at me. Hey, what the hell did you do that for? I didn't stick around to answer him, though. I just grabbed my stuff, and I then ran to find the nearest security guard. After this, I never had another encounter with him. The last I heard of him was that he tried to steal a bunch of stuff from the Ross in the mall, and the cops were called, and he was arrested. I know this may not sound that scary to some people, but it really creeped me out, and I really hope that I never see him again. I'm a 25-year-old female, and I used to be an assistant manager at Dollar Tree just a few years ago. It was a Sunday afternoon, and I was taking my lunch break in the office. As soon as I got done eating, I went to the registers to check on my cashier, and there was an older man standing at the second register. As I approach, the man then says, Hey, you're just the person I need to help me. My girlfriend needs me to email her this unemployment paperwork from my phone, and I'm not sure how to do it. Could you help me? I was very confused as to why this man came into a Dollar Tree asking me to help with this, as he wasn't even a former employee or anything, but me being the people pleaser I am, said that I wasn't really sure I would know how to help him, but that I could try. He hands me his phone, and he just keeps talking on and on about how his girlfriend needs him to send this paperwork and how I'm a lifesaver. I told him if he could screenshot the paper she needs, I could attach it to an email for him. He just kept beating around the bush though, and he had me getting into the email app on his phone, but wasn't really having me do anything productive. I asked him what his girlfriend's email was so that I could enter it in for him. He pauses, and he then says that he doesn't know, and that he has to call her. So he takes his phone from me, and he acts like he's calling his girlfriend. He starts going on and on about how this really nice girl at the Dollar Tree is helping him with the unemployment paperwork, and he says he's going to buy me a candy bar and pop next time he comes in, because I was so helpful, which I nicely declined. He keeps going on and on without asking for the email, and I don't even hear anyone speaking back on the other line. So at this point, I'm getting very uncomfortable. All of a sudden, he just says, Oh, I have to go. Thank you so much for your help. And he leaves the store. I turned to my coworker Lloyd who was working the register, and I gave him a weird look. I then said, I have no idea what that guy was talking about, but he kind of creeped me out. Then Lloyd tells me that the man had actually came in about 15 minutes before I was done with my break claiming that his car ran out of gas across the street at the speedway, and how he needed someone to come outside to help him, and that's when he asked if there was another employee there. Lloyd just told him no, and continued ringing up the customer at his register. That's when he then said that the guy proceeded to stand up there until I came out for my lunch break. Of course, at this point I'm getting really anxious, and I then say to Lloyd that it's really weird that this man tells me how he needs help with one thing, but it asked for something else initially, but Lloyd just says that maybe the man was lonely and just needed someone to talk to. This encounter still rubbed me the wrong way, and I stayed on alert. I called my mom, and she agreed that it was very strange, and she thought that I should call the non-emergency police line, as I had another scary experience working there in the past with another strange man. I assured her I would be okay, because I didn't want to bug the police if I was overreacting, so I just went about my night. Exactly one week later, I was working on a Sunday again, and I had sent my cashier on break, and I was working the register. A customer I had just cashed out came back into the store, and then tells me, I'm really not comfortable walking out to my car. There's a strange man out there scoping out the store, and he's walking up to people, saying that his car ran out of gas across the street at the speedway, and how he needs someone to come help him. I told her that the very same thing happened just last week, and I asked her to describe the man. Her description was exactly the same as the man who had been there a week before. So I called my mom, and I went outside, and lo and behold, it was the same creepy old man. I ran into the office to try and find the non-emergency number and dial it, 
Of course, the number listed in the office wasn't the right number. I then call my mom back to see if she can get a hold of anyone. In the two minutes it took me to do all this, by the time I got back outside, the man was nowhere to be found. At this point, I'm really scared because this man has come to the store twice trying to lure women to his car while I've been working. I was on edge for the rest of my shift, but I didn't have anything else weird happen. The very next night when I was closing, I had asked my husband to sit outside in his car after we closed, just to make sure that me and my cashier made it safely to our cars. It was about 9.15pm and we were already closed at this point when my husband then calls me. He tells me that there's a dark blue truck that has drove by slowly throughout the parking lot three times and that the third time he drove real close to the store and he stuck his whole upper half of his body right out the window as he was trying to look inside the store. He said the man matched the description of the same one who had been in the store previously. After pulling past the store, the man in the trunk pulled over next to my car and parked there for several minutes. My husband then called the police and he took his phone out to try and take a picture of the man's license plate. And right when he did that, the man sped out of the parking lot. By the time the police got there, the man was already gone. I was able to file a police report and the police sat outside the Dollar Tree when I closed one time and I never did see the man again. I did end up finding out though that the tractor supply right next door to our store had a strange man who matched my description and he was doing the exact same thing to the women that left their store. Now I know nothing major ended up happening, but it was definitely a very scary situation and especially with all of the sex trafficking that's going on. You can never be too careful. Always be aware of your surroundings and if something doesn't feel right, it probably isn't. Always trust your gut. I'm a 25 year old female and I used to be an assistant manager at a Dollar Tree just a few years ago. I previously submitted a story where I talked about how I had another scary encounter with a strange man and I thought I would share that one as well. But before I was an assistant manager, I was just a cashier and it was probably about 1.30 in the afternoon, and I had just gotten off my shift. I had parked in the back of the parking lot, and the Dollar Tree parking lot is attached to parking lots for other businesses as well. So there's a gap between the parking spaces where people drive between the different lots. I had stopped and waited at that gap for a man in a truck that was driving through. Once he drove past me, I continued to my walk. Out of the corner of my eye, I could see that right after the man drove past, he stopped his truck right there. He then got out, leaving his driver door open, and he started walking quickly behind me. I ran to my car, shoved my key into the lock, and I jumped into my car and locked it. Once I was inside, I watched the man from my rear view mirror, and I saw him pause, turn around, and open the back of his truck like he was putting something back there, and he then jumped in his truck and drove away quickly. I had this horrible feeling in my stomach like I had just barely avoided something terrible. I then tried justifying why the man could have gotten out of his truck, but I couldn't come up with any explanation as to why he just stopped his truck and started speed walking behind me. I ended up filing a police report when this happened, but I never ended up hearing anything afterwards. I was definitely more aware of my surroundings after that incident. I'm not really sure if this would count as a scary Walmart story, or more of a what the fuck kind of story, but it definitely felt like a little bit of both. Last year, I had actually planned to drive with my girls from Pennsylvania to Virginia, as we were going to celebrate Easter there. I had planned to leave on Good Friday, well, more like the middle of the night Thursday than into Friday. I really like to drive when there's no traffic. The girls usually sleep, plus getting to my mom's at like 8 in the morning helps by a whole extra day, as opposed to leaving at a human hour and wasting time stuck in traffic. 
Well, given that I like to leave in the middle of the night when my husband doesn't join us and I have to do all the driving, I like to go to bed super early. This particular evening, I tried to lay down around 5 p.m. and I had trouble falling asleep. The more I couldn't sleep, the more irritated I got. The more irritated I got, the more I couldn't sleep. Around 7 o'clock, I decided to just take a quick trip to Walmart for a couple of things that I had planned to get after I got to my mom's. The Walmart I went to is a bit on the shady side, but it's usually nothing worse than a larger population of weirdos than I'm used to, and a lot of shoplifting. Shoplifting to the point that when we first moved to that area, my dumb self took a minute to realize why it seemed like there were usually cops there every time we were there. I've never seen anything over the top or violent there though. Mostly just a lot of weirdos. As well as a population that honestly makes me wonder how dumb people are. And also a little sad to realize that's in the area. There's a decent population that may legitimately be in desperate enough circumstances to feel like shoplifting is their only way to survive. You know, the whole stole a loaf of bread to feed my family concept. This particular trip took me there to grab some yarn and a specific size crochet hook. I'm not naive enough to think that nothing bad can happen at Walmart, but at this point, the store was so crowded, just over 40 hours before Easter, and there was so much weird stuff at that place in general that I'm honestly not sure if the creep that I ran into in the craft aisle followed me there or happened to see me there while I was looking for what I needed. In any case, he decides to start talking to me. He was clearly at least 10 years younger than me and just randomly looking at the yarn. After pulling some yarn down and then putting it back, he asked if he could ask me a question. I got slightly creeped out vibes, but on the flip side, I was in the aisle nitpicking the yarn to try and decide on what color combinations for a pattern I wanted. And I was thinking in my mind that if I had my husband get the yarn for me, he would probably mess it up. He's good at matching colors, but he's clueless when I tell him I need a certain brand or texture. So the random guy in the yarn aisle asking if he could ask me something kind of threw me off. Because I'm like, why is there a young guy in a craft aisle? Maybe he's trying to make something and he doesn't know what to pick. Or he's shopping for someone else. And maybe he's just as clueless as my husband. Boy, was I wrong. He started asking me things like, was I married, was I happy with my husband, etc. And that led to him actually claiming that he makes porn videos, and then trying to ask me very explicit questions, and also making explicit comments in general, saying things like, he's into older white women. He was a dark-skinned man, but I couldn't really tell if he was mixed or Hispanic. Not entirely relevant, but it adds context to the whole white women statement. He started slightly touching my hips back and neck, and he had kind of tugged on my hair a bit. It was in French braided pigtails at the time, which keeps it from being annoying at night. After he pulled my hair, he said that he liked it. I made some offhand comment about how putting my hair up tight is some kind of weird migraine relief sometimes for me. I was also having a headache going on at this point. He asked repeatedly if I would go to a secluded area in the garden department to mess around with him because he thought I was hot. Huge alarm bells at this point. I don't really know what his exact intentions were, but I'm very certain that if I would have gone, it would have been very bad for me. I didn't want to rule out him just messing around with me though because he was already so brazen with how he was talking to me and acting so weird in general that I don't think anything he would have done or not done would have really surprised me all that much. I almost forgot to add this, but by this point, he asked me if I've ever done or would be willing to do porn videos. He said he would pay for it and if I would do it, and he tried to offer to pay me to just go mess around in the garden for a bit. And at one point, he literally put his hand on my skirt and groped me. He was so quick with it that I wasn't even able to react. Through this whole situation, I was frozen. I wanted to get away from him, but like, what do I do? I was kind of scared to even try and yell, 
But my paranoid mind was thinking that what if he by chance has a hidden weapon or any possible way to try and hurt me? I said no and that I needed to finish up my shopping and I wanted to leave, that I wasn't interested in going with him. He proceeded to follow me while I started looking in random aisles, as in he was almost right on top of me. He was so close. I was hoping he would just lose interest and leave. I was also trying to figure out how the hell to get away from him and be absolutely sure that he didn't follow me out of the store. I didn't want him to follow me in general, but the store was so busy and I had to park pretty far away from the store in a weird spot. Not exactly ideal to be able to get out there fast or quickly back into the store if I noticed him following me. I contemplating trying to hide in the bathroom a bit, but I obviously wouldn't be sure if he left and I also wouldn't have put it past him to follow me into the bathroom. I was randomly walking around because I know someone who works there, and I was hoping to find him specifically. The guy is huge, like well over six feet tall, and he's built like a football player. Unfortunately though, I didn't see him. I decided to go to the checkout, hoping he would leave, and I figured I would find an excuse to go to customer service and try to get someone to walk me to my car. I wasn't entirely sure how I was going to keep him from being suspicious or anything, but I didn't have any other plan. The self-checkout line was really long, and he kept saying that, We should probably go. Let's go mess around. I repeatedly told him that I was going home when I was done. He eventually finally left me alone and walked off. After I was done paying, I had asked the greeter if someone could walk me to my car. He pointed out a couple of ladies that were near the customer service, who were likely managers or loss prevention. One of them said sure, and they walked with me. I gave her all the details I could, including that I'd used the self-checkout, and I didn't know if they might be able to view the cameras and see him. When we were at my car, I had noticed a cop car had pulled up. No idea who called the cops, but the timing seemed too short for them to have called about a shoplifter, and they didn't seem to be acting like there was a big emergency, and there was only one of them. So I'm not really sure if one of the employees called because of that guy, or if maybe there was something else going on in the store. And in any case, that was the scariest and weirdest encounter that I've ever experienced there, and I really hope I never see that sicko again. This happened not that long ago. I went to a fairly recognizable craft store that I frequent for items that I use for my growing obsession with making things. I never actually had this happen to me until the last trip. My dad drove me to the store and he told me to go inside and get what I needed while he waited in the car. I thought nothing of it and I walked straight inside. I grabbed a basket and I immediately walked to the back of the store where the items I wanted were stored at. On my way there, a man had stood in my way, so I then politely said, excuse me, and then squeezed past. I went to the jewelry making section, and I was looking through the charms for something that I wanted to use for my crafts, when out of the corner of my eye, I saw the man that I passed walk by the front end of the aisle. I thought nothing of it, and I just went back to looking, and not that. Much later, he actually turned down the aisle, and he began walking behind me. I thought it was a little strange, but for all I knew he could be lost, and didn't know what aisle to look down for a certain item. But again, he turned down the aisle, walking past me, then stopping to look at something, but I could really feel his eyes on me. I would occasionally glance at him and notice that he was staring at me. This obviously freaked me out and I started to panic, trying to grab all of the items that I needed as fast as possible. I then went to another aisle and once again, there he was walking past me. He was at the end of the aisle, walking down the aisle past me. Now, I'm an extremely anxious person and I began to think that maybe I was just overthinking it, and he really was just minding his own business. 
until I gathered all the things I wanted and I put them in the basket. I went to walk down the aisle and he just stood in my way. I politely asked him if I could squeeze by and he took a little step, but it wasn't really enough to squeeze past him, considering that I'm on the bigger body size, but I tried my best to squeeze past him and then made a beeline for the checkout line. And like a nightmare, he was there before I was, waiting at the front door, staring at me. And for the first time, I actually felt dread and fear. His eyes were glossed over, almost yellow, with red veins that looked like he was on something. His eyes were so red that it looked like he hadn't blinked the entire time he was watching me. I tried to ignore him, as the cashier then checked out all my items. I then paid and grabbed my bags and then speed walked out the door into the car. In my head, I'm just panicking and screaming that my dad would see me and praying the man didn't follow me outside. Luckily, the man didn't follow me out to the car, but he was standing outside on the sidewalk. I felt so anxious. I don't know what the man wanted or what I did to make him so keen on watching me. But I don't think I feel safe shopping alone there anymore. Trigger warning for sexual assault. Groping to be more specific. The story is a reminder for women to always be aware of their surroundings no matter what. For context, I'm a 20 year old female, but I was 18 when this story took place. I was raised by two police officers for parents, and I was always taught to be aware of my surroundings. So looking back at this story, I really feel so stupid for so many of my decisions that I made that I could have easily avoided so many of these outcomes. I hate to say it, but I've had my fair share of stories as a woman because of my body, more on the thicker and curvy side. But this one has always stuck with me. And it's said as a reminder to always be on your guard no matter where or who you're with. I'm from a very popular tourist town in the south, so it's not uncommon to have a lot of people in town on the weekends. My town has always been considered safe, for it's not a bigger city, but that fact alone made me more vulnerable and also naive in this story. I was a senior in high school at the time. Throughout the school day for my fall semester, I had two online classes that I was able to leave campus early for. I also got to do classwork whenever I wanted. So on the Friday of this week, I decided to leave school and go to the local Books A Million to shop for some journals and pencils for school. I have shopped at this Books A Million numerous times before, and I've always felt safe in there. I pulled into the parking lot and I parked on the side of the building, for it was the closest space to the front door. As I was parking, I noticed four older men sitting and standing at a bench that was right next to the front door. I walked out of my car and headed to the front door as usual. As I was heading my way inside the store, I looked over towards the group of men and instantly, I felt something off. The men looked towards my way and the way they looked at me made me feel really uncomfortable. One of the men who was about my dad's age, if not older, was looking me up and down as if I was a piece of meat. Red flags were totally going off in my head, but for some reason, I decided to ignore them and just get inside the store. So I walked quicker to the front door. One of the men smiled at me and nodded his head, indicating a hello. Another thing about where I'm from is it's not very uncommon to say hello to people. You would just say hi and move on. So on instinct, that's what I did. I just nodded my head quickly and awkwardly before going inside the store. Looking back, I feel so stupid for doing that. I feel like I just gave them an invitation for what happened next. I went inside the store and I looked around for about 20 minutes at books, trying to just forget what had just happened outside and the uneasiness as well as that retching feeling in my gut. I then finally went over to where the journals were. I was looking at the journals, when again, I felt uneasy. My gut was telling me to get out of the store. Not a few seconds later, I had noticed something dark in my peripheral vision. 
I turned around and I found the same man from before that was sitting outside. The one that nodded towards me. He was standing right beside me now. He was standing super close to me to the point where I could smell a strong weed stench right off of him. I took a few steps away from him and I just stood there in shock while my gut was screaming at me to get the hell out of there. The man, who looked older than the one looking me up and down from earlier, shoved his hands in his pockets, and he then smiled at me in a way that sent shivers down my spine. He looked at me perversely, then said, Hi, young lady. I just want to say that you're one fine pretty girl. Do you have a boyfriend? At this point, my adrenaline started kicking in, as well as my anxiety. Trying to walk away from the aisle we were in, I muttered, Thank you, but I'm not interested. As I was trying to walk away, he had stepped around me, blocking me in the aisle. Mind you, I'm five foot two, and he was well over six foot tall. He towered over me. He stepped even closer to me, and he got really close to my face, then saying, Don't try and leave now. I want to get to know you. I tried stepping around him again, but only for him to block my path yet again. I decided to lie to get this man to leave me alone. Yeah, I have a boyfriend. Now please, leave me alone. The man didn't even move when I said that. Instead, he got closer to me, then saying, Well, he's gonna have to share you with me. You're mighty sexy. As he said this, he then groped the side of my thigh. My anxiety and adrenaline were totally going through the roof at this point. I started to freeze up because I've never been physically assaulted like that before. When adrenaline and anxiety are running wild, that's when the mind works fastest. So that's when the first idea popped into my head. I didn't consider if it would work or not. I just wanted to get out of that situation as quickly as possible. I moved against the bookshelf where there was a slit gap between the man's arm where he was hovering over me. I took my chance and I pushed through the gap and then quickly jogged out of the aisle. I had a shopping bag with journals and pens, so I went to the cashier. The cashier noticed my discomfort and she had started asking if everything was alright, still trying to understand what had just happened. I just told her I have an emergency and I needed to check out quickly. She did just that, and I bolted the hell out of the store, but not before looking inside, and I saw two of the other men walking around the aisle where I had just escaped from the other man. I then very quickly ran to my car, which luckily for me, my driver's side door will unlock automatically whenever I come near it with the keys. I then jumped into my car and locked the door. As I started up my car, my adrenaline was still kicking through my body. I looked at the front door at the bench where the men were sitting from earlier, only to now find an even bigger group of men sitting there. The man that cornered and assaulted me came speed walking out of the store towards my car. At this point, there's no way I was going to stick around to find out what his next actions were. I then quickly backed out and pulled out of the parking lot. I sped my way home, constantly checking my mirrors just to make sure that I wasn't being followed, which luckily I wasn't. I took the back way home that has a lot of turns and curves just to make sure. Once I got home, I saw my dad in the driveway doing work on his motorcycle. I got out of my car and he immediately got concerned. I didn't realize until then just how hard I was breathing. He asked what happened and I tried explaining to him only for a jumble of words to come out. He then took me inside and sat me down. I broke down crying. I didn't realize how much fear and anxiety had actually built up inside of my chest. After I calmed down, I explained what happened. My dad contacted an officer to go check out the store, but the men weren't there anymore. There was no real way of telling if they were locals or just tourists. I didn't go back to that books a million though until a couple of months later, with my dad and sister. I do still go there from time to time, but not without the reminder of what happened to me. 
I know this story may not be as scary as some of the others told, but this was a very frightening experience for me, and I've become even more cautious and way more paranoid whenever I'm in public, whether I'm in my own hometown or somewhere else. Luckily, I haven't seen those men since, and hopefully I never will. To all the ladies out there, please, please, please be aware of your surroundings at all times. I'm lucky that I acted when I did, because I truly feel that if I didn't, something would have happened to me once I left that store. Please be safe. This happened in 2005 when I was 17. One night, I decided to go do some shopping at a Kmart. Yeah, it was back when we still had a Kmart in the North American state I live in so it was a long time ago. Anyways, I was in the store looking at the clothes when I see this creepy middle-aged guy looking at me awkwardly. I didn't think too much of it, but I still gave him a playful wave and continued my shopping. Ah, I remember it like it was yesterday. So I remember exactly what happened and where in the store I went to. I went to the electronics department to get some new stuff for my PlayStation. Then after I checked out, the same guy from before was right behind me. He asked if I was going home. I told him I was, even though I was actually just going to a friend's house. He then asked me how old I was. I told him I was 17, and he actually had the audacity to tell me I looked really hot for my age. One of the employees actually saw how uncomfortable I looked, as well as the guy being weird to me, and she confronted the guy, saying to him how she's seen him doing this to other customers, and that if he didn't leave the store, they would call the police. That was when he totally flipped out, and eventually left the store. I thanked the woman, and she said she had seen him do it to many other customers before. One other time when I went there, the same woman that helped me with that situation I had with that creepy guy said that he was doing what he did to me to another customer who was only a 13-year-old girl. Then she said when the manager saw it, he called the police and the same guy was actually a pedophile and a registered sex offender. He was eventually arrested and permanently banned from ever entering that store again. I never saw the guy again after my experience. That store sadly closed down for good one decade later in 2015, but I thank my lucky stars to this day that that woman helped me out of it with that guy. When I was in college, I was out and about with my then boyfriend. We had gone to dinner and then we went to Walmart to get some typical college foods so we could survive a Sunday in. I was dressed up in a casual dressy fit. We decided to split up while we shopped, maybe to do some quicker shopping, but I don't really remember the exact reason why. I was wandering the grocery aisles when I noticed this girl who looked to be about my age. In a friendly manner, we casually smile at each other and continue on shopping. It didn't seem weird at first, but I kept noticing her in the same aisles as me and a big muscular man who was never far behind us. Eventually, I texted my boyfriend, asking where he was, and continued on shopping. The next thing I know, the girl approaches me, and she says how she really loves my jacket. I just reply back with, thanks, it's Maurice's, and I try to move on. She stops me, and she says something along the lines of, hey you look like you're my age and you seem really nice so i just moved here for a new job and company that my friends and i are starting and she tried to ask me questions about where i was from i was very vague and untrusting with what i said noticing this isn't normal then she said i'm looking for more people like you and i to work for our company it's kind of a warehouse job and i would really love for you to be one of our bookkeepers you should give me your number. I replied back with, That's honestly so nice of you to offer me a job, but I'm not really a desk person, and I already have a job that I love. Aw, oh, that's a real bummer. 
I thought we might work well together, she said. Well, would you want to give me your number so we can hang out sometime? I would love to have a friend who can show me around the city. I realized that I wasn't getting out of this situation until my boyfriend showed up, or if I gave her my number. Eventually, I had rattled off a fake phone number and then said, Hey, I'll catch you later. I gotta go. Then I walked away, praying my boyfriend would be near me so we could get the fuck out of there. While I was looking for him and trying to call him, the girl had caught up to me and had said, Hey, I tried to call you, but it said the number was out of service. And as I tried to come up with a quick excuse and then say, Oh, maybe you typed it in wrong. She saw that my iPhone was unlocked and in my hand. She then quickly snatched my phone right out of my hand and then called herself on it. I was so flustered and mad at her that I had snatched my phone right back when my boyfriend then came right around the corner. He instantly recognized that something was up and said we needed to go. When the girl saw him approach me, she looked so disappointed to see him and she stopped trying to interact. We ended up not buying anything there and just leaving. Later that night, we had both called our parents and the police. The police said they didn't think it was anything ill-intended, but I was absolutely positive it was probably human trafficking. I was going to switch my phone number because I was so scared. I blocked them and I turned off all the location access on my phone. I was too scared to go anywhere alone for a while, and I even told my coach so she knew as well. Well, a couple of days later after this, I got a text from a random number. It was the girl. She had sent me a picture of one of my best friends who was out drinking downtown with some of her other friends. The text said, So I met your best friend. She gave me your number because I told her I was looking for new friends. She showed me a picture of you, and I said, what a coincidence. I met her the other day, and I lost her number when I got a new phone. About two minutes later, I got a text from my best friend that said, So I gave your number to some girl who wants to make friends around here, and she's looking for people to join her business. And since I'm going to be moving this week, I thought of you. I totally freaked out. I couldn't believe she was actually with her, and I told her to get away and to not leave alone with her. I stayed up all night totally worried until my best friend got home. She said that she was fine though, otherwise I would have gone to pick her up. The next day my best friend apologized and she told me to block the number. My friend and her group tried to ditch her but she kept showing up at the bars they were at. She said the girl was relentless and had texted her all night trying to get my friend to go hang out at her place. My best friend also said that when she had asked the girl about the business, the girl wouldn't give her that many details, other than the fact that it was a warehouse somewhere that would pay her great, and it's in town, and if she wanted a tour, she would have to take her. Well, we never did end up hearing from this girl again. So today I was listening to a podcast, and they had mentioned different sex trafficking tactics. Two were vague jobs, where they say they'll pay you well, but you needed to come meet them to give you more information, as well as a new-to-town girl who desperately needs new friends. I've been thinking about this all morning, and I'm really glad I felt uncomfortable and my friend didn't go with this girl. But I'm mostly really mad at the cops who ignored my concern and said it was nothing. I really hope they rode down the tip that night, but I doubt they did. Okay, so the more that I've thought about this, the more freaked out that I've gotten. So I was at a Home Depot just about a month ago, and there was a group of two men as well as a woman also in the store. It was about 9pm and there weren't that many people left in the store. I had heard one of the men comment that he liked my outfit, and I then said thank you right over my shoulder, and didn't think much of it. I then heard him say something softly to the woman with him, but I couldn't hear what it was. A few minutes later, I walked down an aisle, and there they were. When I went to walk past, one of the men stuck his hand out in front of me for me to shake it, also blocking my path. He looked like a fairly normal, average redneck type of guy. 
He was with a woman that looked about the same vibe as him, but there was another man with him that looked homeless. He had a really crazy look on his face, long tangled hair, and he was covered in grease or some kind of dirt of some kind. The redneck guy asked my name, and I told him it was Amy, to which he then replied back with, I love Amy's. Why don't you shake my hand? Amy's not my real name, by the way, but unfortunately, I had told the man my real name. I reluctantly shook his hand as well, and he looked me up and down. His hand was black with grease, and I was really confused as to what was going on. The redneck guy keeps asking me a lot of personal questions, including where I'm from, if I was a student, and then after a minute or two, he asked me where I'm going. My jaw kind of dropped, and the woman smiled creepily, then saying, She's probably just going back to her apartment. Right, sweetie? And I just nervously laughed. At this point, I'm very obviously uncomfortable, and so I say I have to go and walk away. I put down all the stuff I was carrying in the store and immediately speed walk to the exit. As I was getting in my car, I see the woman leave the store from the other exit and stand by an SUV, all while pulling out her phone and making a call while looking at me. I got the fuck out of there, making sure that no one followed me. At first, I thought that I was just being paranoid, but no encounter has ever truly unsettled me like this one. One night when I was 17, I was clothes shopping at Walmart. I was trying to get on a couple of pairs of jeans in the fitting room. After I tried on the first pair, I walked out of the fitting room and I walked around a little bit of the clothing department to try and break them in. So I switched back into my other pants and bought three pairs of the jeans that I tried on. I went to go check out, and when I got to the self-checkout, there was this guy staring at me. He looked to be in his early 40s. He was tall, about six foot three, skinny, had short black hair, and he had a creepy grin on his face, like a demon straight from hell. I try not to pay attention to him, so I checked out. I then went to my car and drove home. Two hours later, at about 11.30 p.m., I had gotten a text from an unknown number. The text said, Hey, did you see me at the self-checkout at Walmart a couple hours ago? I asked who it was, and another text came in saying it was the same guy that was staring at me at the self-checkout. I then texted him back, asking, Oh, hello, where did you get my number from? He said that he saw it in my open wallet when I was in the fitting room, and he said he just wanted to say hello. As you can imagine, I was pretty creeped out by this. I was just like, uh, yeah, alright then. He said he wanted to get to know me because I seemed cool to him. He then sent me another text saying that those jeans that I was wearing made my butt look hot, and he asked me to send him a picture of me in my underwear. I was disgusted. I told him I was a 17-year-old guy. He then said, It's alright. I'm really into people your age. Just send me one picture of you in your underwear. I told him no, and that he shouldn't be flirting with a minor, because I was only 17 at the time. He told me he was gay, and he told me to also send him a picture of me naked. I told him to go fuck himself, and I told him he's a pervert for asking a 17-year-old dude for nude photos and photos of me in my underwear. He said that he knew where I lived, and he would come to my house and strangle me if I didn't send him any of the photos of me naked or in my underwear. I went to go show the text to my mother. She saw all of the texts, and she was furious. We then got in the car and drove to the police station to file a report. We showed them the messages, and they printed them off as evidence. They tracked the guy's phone number, and it was confirmed to be the same exact guy who gave me that devilish grin at the self-checkout at the Walmart. The police came back and told us that he was a registered sex offender and a pedophile, 
and was also wanted for abduction of a nine-year-old girl. Long story short, this guy ended up getting arrested. Both me and my mom were very relieved that he was arrested, and we never did see him again after that night. So the story is actually pretty short in comparison to some of the others I've heard. But honestly, consider that a good thing, as nothing actually came of it thanks to how quickly it was handled. I believe it was when we went out for my mother's birthday. We had dinner at a nice restaurant, and then my brother, partner, and I decided to take her over to Walmart so we could all buy her a present, since it's easier to take her to pick something out than it is to figure out a surprise gift. Anyways, while we're there, my brother goes off to the aisle with the Hot Wheels cars on it, since he's an avid collector, and my partner, mother, and I one all over. None of us are bothered by letting my brother go anywhere on his own since he was 17 at the time. He is also not a small kid by any means, nor does he look like a child, but that doesn't take away from the unsettling event that followed. My mother and partner were really invested in something in the aisle we were on, but I could hear talking coming from the next aisle over. I had assumed that my brother was alone, so I decided to go check it out and see if maybe he had run into a friend of his. When I rounded the corner, I saw him and a rather skeezy looking old guy. He was probably late 40s to mid 50s and he was dressed in a NASCAR shirt and cargo shorts. For some reason, I instantly felt very put off by him. The conversation he was holding with my brother had stopped when I came down the aisle. So I approached my brother and I asked what he was looking at. He showed me a couple of cars that he was planning to buy and I moved on down the aisle back to where my mother and partner were. I instantly told them that we needed to go to the next aisle over with my brother and that a creepy looking man was over there with him. My mom being the overprotective type she was didn't hesitate, nor did my partner. Which I might add is also imposing which probably helped a lot. We came around the aisle, and when we did, the man instantly backed away from my brother and ran, like flat out ran out of the aisle and away from us. We caught him a few more times in the store shopping, and once again on his way out. We assumed he must be a trucker, since he was heading for the truck stop across the street rather than a car. It unnerves me to think what might have been said or been done had we not approached them when we did, or if my brother had been younger or more naive. According to my brother, the man had claimed to be a Lego collector from New York. I don't know what else was said, but he was definitely also creeped out by the guy. So yeah, that's my unsettling story. My name is Leah, I'm 11, and this is one of two stories that happened to me and my mom. The first one happened in 2018 when I was 6. I'll say this right now, thank goodness I inherited my mom's photographing memory, because otherwise some of this may not even make sense to anyone listening to it. I remember that it was February 11th, six days before my birthday and my mom, grandma, uncle, and I were in the family truck on our way to the local Walmart to get some groceries, and my mom wanted to pick out my cake. She said if I was good, she'd maybe give me a toy as an early birthday present. I really wanted a Merida doll because I really loved the movie Brave, so I told my mom that I'd be really good. She just laughed and said, I know, Pumpkin. Just remember what mom says. Don't talk to strangers or go anywhere with them. I nodded. I was a bit of a spunky and wild child. Grandma always called me Little Merida because of how stubborn and wild I was, but I always tried to be good for my mom so she'd have less stress on her. We arrived at Walmart and my uncle got a cart. My mom put me in the toddler seat in front and buckled me in before wheeling it towards the doors. As we walked closer to the entrance doors, I saw two people, a man and a woman, and they looked to be in their 20s, 
and they were standing by the door. They were stopping people and talking to them while they held out small oranges, asking kids if they'd like one. My uncle rolled his eyes and said in a bored tone, Weirdos, probably begging for money instead of getting a real job. Losers the whole bunch. I heard my mom say in a stern tone, Jack, you don't know that for sure. Maybe they're just trying to be nice. Don't set a bad example for Leah. He just muttered a, huh, whatever, as we entered the store. About two hours later, we had finished our shopping and had checked out. I had my Merida doll in her box next to me in the seat. Mom took the cart and wheeled me out. We heard a man's voice say in a kind tone, Excuse me. I turned and saw the two people from before coming up to us now. Now that they were up close, I saw that they looked very dirty and a bit off, like their eyes gave away that they might have other not so nice plans. The man came up and stopped the cart. I quickly moved my hand away. I could see orange peelings on his fingers and they looked sticky. The man looked at my mom and then said, your daughter's so cute, can me and my girlfriend pray over her? I want to know that one of his angels are safe with a loving soul like you. My mom, wise to the fact that something weird was happening, then said, No thank you. We have to get home to dad, don't we honey? Somebody needs to give dad a big hug and kiss when we see him, don't you? We'll be going now. She started to walk away, but the man stopped our car yet again, saying it would be a short prayer and he wouldn't do anything else. But I saw the woman circling around mom, and she looked like she was going to grab my mom's purse. This is when I then yelled out, Mom, she's gonna take your purse! I then saw my Uncle Jack running towards us from the truck. He'd gone to unlock it and help mom get me in, along with the groceries. I heard him yell, Hey, get the hell away from them, you creeps! The man turned, and Uncle Jack then shoved him away. The woman pulled out a knife and then pointed it right at my uncle, who then laughed and said, Yeah, go ahead and try it, bitch. I'll drop you where you stand. She did, and that was a huge mistake. My uncle knows karate, and within what seemed like seconds, she was on the ground, the blade way out of reach. I was in tears, screaming at the man who looked ready to attack my uncle not to hurt him. Someone was actually yelling that the cops were coming, and when they did, the two were arrested. One of the officers asked if I wanted my doll out of the box so that I could hold her to feel safe, and he opened up my Mirada doll for me. He seemed really nice, and he told me that I was like Mirada for being so brave and also telling my mom about what the man was going to do. I asked if we could go home and celebrate my birthday now. The officer smiled. Yeah, go ahead and celebrate your birthday, little hero. Have two pieces of cake. You earn the second piece, the officer said. As we drove home, Uncle Jack sighed looking at Mom, and he then said, Yeah, what did I say? You can't trust these weirdos. He then glanced at me in the rearview mirror and then smirked, saying, I owe you another present for your birthday, little Merida. So yeah, to that weird couple that wanted to pray over me, I have an amazing idea instead. How about the two of you never encounter me again? This is the second story and is a personal experience of my mom's from her days working at Walmart as a cashier in the liquor store. The store has the liquor store inside of the store between the vision center and the customer service desk, and there's a door leading to the parking lot inside the liquor store that the customers can enter and exit through. Okay, now here's the actual story. My mom was on her eighth and final year at her Walmart store. She didn't think it would be her last year, but this made her reconsider. The store wasn't in a bad part of town per se, but it did have the occasional creeps, drug addicts, and of course, drunks. She was organizing the shelf of wine coolers. 
when the door leading to the outside opened, and a skinny tall man in his 30s then walked in, his head down and looking really down. My mom asked the man if he was okay and that he seemed really down. The man looked at my mom and said sadly, Not really. I have been having a really bad day. My girl left me. My car's close to dying on me, and I just feel so worthless. Can I have a hug? I need to feel better. My mom was a little weirded out, but gave a very brief hug to the man. She smelled something like weed or something on his leather jacket, and she quickly pulled away, but the man just smiled and walked into the store. About 10 minutes later, he came back and he asked to buy about four small bottles of a flavored vodka called UV. It comes in a lot of different flavors, and when my mom asked for his ID, he gave it to her. So she gave him the flavors he requested, and he exited out through the door leading outside. About 30 minutes later, he returned and he asked for four more. She said that she couldn't do it without her manager's approval and she then called the manager over her walkie-talkie she had near her, but one of the service desk people came instead. Her name was Sadie. Sadie didn't really like my mom and just gave the man what he wanted, and he left again. Another 30 minutes go by, as my mom is ringing up these two young ladies. The guy comes back in, staggering, and getting in line behind the two girls and he starts to make really lewd comments about what he'd do to them and to my mom before leaning over the counter and then whispering drunkenly to my mom, Give me all those little bottles, bitch. You better not say no, or I'll take that little ass and make you sorry you did. Now hurry up. Give me all of them, you little whore. One of the girls ran into the main part of the store and to the service desk. Meantime, my mom was saying, No! No, I can't. I won't. All while having an internal mental breakdown as this man came near to the back of the register, basically trapping her there since it was against a wall. Before he could do anything, however, two managers and another customer service clerk, her name was Jane, then came running in as my mom cowered. The man, obviously drunk and feeling pretty ballsy, turned to the two managers and then said, don't even fucking think about stopping me. I'll knock your fucking lights out, motherfuckers. One of the managers, the shorter of the two named Kyle, went to my mom's side and then shielded her from this drunken creeper, while the other taller one named James looked down at this guy. He just replied calmly, Yeah, just try it, buddy. I'll meet you outside in a minute, then let's see how tough you really are. The man glared at my mom, and then said, Yeah, this ain't over, whore. And stomped out into the main part of the store, raging. Kyle tried to calm mom down, but she panicked so bad she had asked Jane to take mom to the back and clock her out for the whole day while he called her mom to pick her up. As Jane and mom were about to leave, the man walked over and then tried to apologize for his horrible behavior. He then asked if he could give my mom a hug to make her feel better. But Jane shielded my mom and told the guy to back off or she'd make him sorry. He did, and when they were halfway to the back of the store where the time clock was, they then heard the man yet again screaming profanities, and we also heard a police officer yelling at the man to put down a box cutter. The psycho had grabbed a box cutter from a passing employee and was now brandishing it like a knife. Mom said that after that happened, she clocked out and got home, and she later found out that the guy had been arrested. Not only was he drunk, but he was also high on weed and cocaine as well. When she was asked if there should be charges pressed for all that he did, her dad, being in full Papa Bear mode, wanted to protect Mom from further pain and said yes. Thankfully, she left three months later, and she and I live a much happier life in the southeastern part of the states. But sometimes we still think about that crazy guy and how he tried to hurt my mom when she just tried to do her job and be so kind to him. So to the crazy man that tried to assault my mom for denying you booze when you were drunk and high, I hope I never meet you. So 
So I was at Walmart today with a simple goal of just buying some odds and ends for a business trip coming up. Well, as you might expect, I was at the section where they sell the typical array of travel sized toiletries. One ounce tubes of toothpaste, mini bottles of shampoo, etc. I just wanted a few of those small empty plastic bottles you can put anything in, and I was in the process of looking at a pack of them when I heard a gruff voice then ask, Hey, are you looking for some good lotion? I turned to see a middle-aged man who looked quite red and sweaty in the face, as if he had just finished some very rigorous workout. As you can imagine, I was caught a bit off guard by this unexpected interaction. I think the only response that I managed to stammer out was, um, but without skipping a beat or waiting for me to finish my confused response, the guy grabs one of the 99 cent mini tubes of gold bond lotion and then says, This right here, this is real good lotion. You just squirt it on right where it hurts. And before I even had a grasp on the whole situation, the guy then squeezes at least half of the lotion in the tube into his mostly bald head. Now, I didn't notice this at first glance, but his scalp was very scabby, and not typical scabs either. Well, I assume they were scabs anyways. They were these quarter-sized, extremely inflamed, crusty wounds on his head. After he squirts the lotion on his head, he immediately rubs it into a particularly bad-looking scab, and then moans. Oh, yeah. He then tosses the tube right back in the bin with the other mini gold bond lotions, and then he says, Quite matter-of-factly, This is for the Caucasian people and cocoa butter is for the black people. I really didn't know how to respond to this, and I noticed a woman several feet behind us looking at us with the surprised bug-eyed expression on her face. Now, I realized that maybe the most polite thing to have done would have been to continue to stand there and listen to this interesting individual then inform me about what lotions are the most appropriate for each racial group, but it may come as no surprise that I was thoroughly creeped out by this weirdo. For some reason, I grabbed a handful of the compact toothbrushes, which I don't even need, and I tossed them into my cart, and I then scurried down the aisle away from this man. I have to admit, I was quite scared that he would start following me. I found myself zigzagging through random aisles until I finally stopped somewhere in the automotive section. To my great relief, I saw no sign of him. Although I continued the rest of my Walmart shopping a bit on edge, very worried that I might encounter the strange man again. Luckily, I was able to finish shopping without seeing him. Now, I realize this is very far from a typical scary story, but it did personally creep me the hell out, so that's why I'm sharing it. As always, everyone, please be careful and watch out for weirdos. I usually don't bother to post anything on Reddit, but I figured that typing the situation out might make me feel better. So I'm 23 years old, female, and I live on my own. I just moved out to the area for school, and I went to my local Walmart to gather supplies for cleaning. As I walked inside, I took note of an older man near the entrance that I briefly made eye contact with and nodded at and I just kept walking. I had looked at folders for a bit, and I then made my way towards the electronic section at the back to go look for a charger. I was making my way through the aisles on the way down looking at all the fall decorations. A lot of them were geared towards kids, so I just glanced at them quickly and then turned around to leave. The same man as before was there. I didn't hear him walk into the aisle and he was holding and inspecting some paper plates with childish Halloween designs on them for kids. I thought that was a little strange, but brushed it off, thinking he had grandkids. I left, and I made my way to the electronic section where they kept the chargers behind locked glass doors. I'm there for about seven to eight minutes, and the same old man shows back up. 
Now, at this point, I'm pretty far from where I last saw him, and I see in the reflection of the glass that he's checking out my ass as he walks by. I brushed it off because I'm used to men making quick glances like that in public, and I just left it at that. He's looking at the display behind me at the other side, goes to leave, and this is where it gets creepy. He stands right behind me, and he starts aggressively eyeing me up and down while licking his lips, paying particular attention to my backside and my legs. He's basically undressing me with his eyes. At this point, he was giving off massive creep vibes, and I started shaking with adrenaline, and I was just really afraid he was going to try and grab me. I stay calm despite my throat feeling like it had a ball in it, and I wait for him to leave. He does. I then go to a random mile nearby electronics, but in the general part of the store, I noticed that there were two men behind the electronics counter, and I wanted to stay near them just in case something went wrong. So I waited a few minutes, just standing there just to see if he showed back up. I wanted to confirm if he was following me around or not. Sure enough, five minutes later, there he was. I caught him quite literally speed walking down the main walkway looking down each aisle as if he was frantically looking for me. He stopped dead in his tracks, saw me notice him, and then promptly scurried off. I went to the electronic section, and I then informed the workers that I was indeed being followed, and that I really wasn't comfortable, and I asked if there was security. They tell me they don't have any, just theft prevention, and they offered to check me out there, or accompany me to finish my shopping. They were very kind, and I did actually take them up on the offer to get my cleaning supplies nearby. As we turned together, the same guy was standing further away, still staring at me. He literally just increased the radius he was using to follow me, and was now watching me from the front by the registers now. I get my stuff and check out, and I then weave through all of the different clothing sections to leave from a different section than the one I originally entered in and saw him from. I didn't see him at all this whole time, and I got to my car. I promptly drove to my new place, but stopped halfway at a random neighborhood. I pulled over and pretended that was my house, just to see if anyone told me. I didn't want this guy finding out where I lived. I then drove home when I didn't see anyone. I may be overreacting, but this is a new area to me, and I've never had someone be quite that creepy and persistent in following me. I've done things on my own plenty of times and I've never had an issue before. This all happened in the middle of the day at like 3 p.m. too. I was wearing loose clothing and I just wanted to take a quick trip in and out. I have no idea what could have happened if I didn't notice him or what his intentions might have been. I can't imagine that they were good. Maybe he would have followed me to my new place. Who knows? Either way, the whole encounter was just really scary. He had no clue that I saw his reflection and the nasty expression on his face. Just stay aware, guys, and watch yourselves. So, I'm a 39-year-old woman, but this happened when I was 12 years old. My brother and I were in Walmart in the CD aisle, and I had bent over to tie my shoe. Well, my little brother then started laughing. He was only nine years old at the time, and when I said what, he leaned in and then quietly said that a guy was looking at my butt. I looked without being too obvious, and there was this old man with a long gray beard that had a braid down the middle of it. I punched my little brother playfully, and we started joking back and forth who was going to be his wife. Then my brother went and joined my parents, and they kind of just let me alone do my own thing. So to the beauty aisle I went, and within seconds, the same guy as before then appeared in the same aisle as me. I went to a different aisle feeling like he was following me, and there he was pretending to look at stuff, but moving closer towards me. So I went to another aisle that most guys wouldn't go to, 
and that was the pads and tampon aisle. Once again, this creep was pretending to look at pads and tampons. I slowly went to the next aisle and then ran to go find my mom. I told her what happened, so she followed me there. She told me to clear my throat if I happened to see him. And sure enough, this time he got so close to me where he could almost grab me. So I started clearing my throat until I coughed, and my mom grabbed me, and we found a manager. Walmart really sucked, because the manager was acting like since the guy didn't actually do anything, they couldn't do anything about it. Yeah, thanks Walmart. I really wish I could say that I never saw him again, but that's not the case. I remember this guy every time I was in the Walmart. I was always watching my back trying to look out for this guy. So anyways, let's skip ahead a bit. I ended up being at a friend's house when I was 16 and her dad's friend came over. And lo and behold, there he was. The same braid in the middle of his beard and he then introduced himself to me as Butch. As soon as we were a veer shot, I flipped out, telling my friend that that's the same creepy Walmart guy that followed me around Walmart when I was 12. She said that she wasn't surprised, but she seemed unaffected. Yeah, sometimes she really wasn't the greatest of friends. So one day when we're hanging out, she acted like we were going to see someone really cool and awesome. And in my little mind, I thought that they knew someone single to introduce me to. So we go knock on the door to this house, and this rather manly looking woman answered the door. She then let us in and brought us cold cokes from the fridge. And then there he fucking was, Butch. He came strutting in the room and made me so uncomfortable that I wanted to throw up. And then things took a really disgusting turn. He started telling us how he wanted to see us naked and take pictures of us enjoying each other's body. As you can imagine, that was a very uncomfortable hour of saying hell no and being angry as hell that my friend brought us to this situation. She never brought me around him again, but years later, her mother-in-law was actually dating him and she actually allowed her kids to spend the night around this sick fuck. Yeah. My friend and her family definitely weren't the smartest, and it gets even worse. So years later, pictures were found belonging to Butch of little kids. And yes, it's exactly what you're thinking. Not innocent pictures, but very bad pictures showing what a monster Butch truly was. And even her mother-in-law took some of the pictures. Very luckily, someone ratted them out and both of them went to jail. The mother-in-law and Butch both became registered sex offenders, but she was released after six months. It didn't really surprise me though as much as it should have. Butch was put in prison for child porn amongst other very horrible crimes involving children. He went to prison for a very long time and he ended up eventually dying there as well, thank God. I sleep much easier now knowing there's one less disgusting pedophile living on this earth harming children. I was at Walmart earlier this evening with my two daughters. One is elementary school aged, while the other is in middle school. We had looked around the school supplies for about a minute, then rounded the corner to see the Halloween candy on display. As we turned the corner, a slightly older guy came really close to us, kind of like he was in a hurry, and he almost ran right into our cart. He didn't have a cart or any items of his own. I said excuse me, and then stopped right in front of the candy to let my youngest ask a bunch of questions about the candy pumpkins. The man stopped quickly, and he started rummaging around the candies right next to my daughter. He was listening to our conversation and he was reacting strange when my daughter then said she wanted to take a picture of the candy. He was being really twitchy and caught my eye and looked away very quickly. We moved on to the women's PJ section to look around for a few minutes when I noticed the same man pass by really close. 
He was turning right towards the shoes with a big bag of candy cradled in his arms. My girls went across the aisle to the boys' clothing section while I finished deciding, and when I was catching up with them a couple of minutes later, that guy was winding through the boys' clothes right towards my daughter's. He had kind of paused and looked confused or lost, and he watched me discuss sizes with my youngest. This is when I started thinking that something was definitely off with this dude. I mentioned him to my older daughter, and then we moved through the partition into the girl's clothes. I didn't see him again for a few minutes, and I figured it was nothing. But then he came into that section, and he was acting like he was trying to pick out a Justice shirt. He still had that big bag of candy that he just kept adjusting his grip on. I kept seeing him take quick peeks at my girls, but then every time he saw me watching him, he just pretended to be occupied in his shopping. I told my oldest that I thought he was following us, and she said that she noticed the same thing. So I made my youngest get in the cart so I could keep a close eye on them both. The guy then walked out of the girls' section, but he looped around the partition back to the boys' section, then stopped at an opening on the other side, but still in a straight line of sight. The man caught my eye again, twitched, and then pulled out his phone, then texting someone, then walking away. By that time, I was now on high alert and possibly getting quite paranoid. I looked around and I saw two slightly older men standing around. One was in electronics kind of looking at a half-empty display of something, but I swear he glared at me several times, even though there were three or four racks of clothes, as well as a hallway with occasional people in between. The third guy had wandered into the girls' section, and he was apparently considering buying a Justice shirt too. Every time he saw me noticing him watching us, he wandered down to the baby aisles, but he just kept coming back after a couple of minutes. I realize now, looking back, that if I had really suspected something bad, I should have just gotten my girls the hell out of there. Clothes shopping for a picky preteen isn't fun, and I really wanted to get it over and done with. On top of that, I kept second-guessing myself that the two other guys were just a coincidence. I kept my girls really close, and after we moved to the women's section, I didn't see any of them again and I stopped feeling creepily that we were being watched. Now it's the middle of the night, and I'm pretty freaked out wondering what could have happened if I didn't notice the first guy, and just continued to let my girls wander around. Should I report anything? I can't imagine anything would be done just because I noticed some guy watching my daughters in Walmart. So yeah, I'm really not sure how to proceed with all this. I don't really know if something bad was happening, or if it's just me being paranoid. If anyone has any ideas, please let me know. I'm a 32-year-old female, but the story takes place 10 years ago back in 2013 in Orlando, Florida. I was 22 at the time. One night... My husband and I decided to go to Walmart to pick up a couple of things. We brought along our daughter who was about to be two years old. Once we entered the Walmart, my husband and I split up. He went over to the hunting and fishing section, and my daughter and I went over to the baby clothes. I was there for about five minutes when I was then approached by an older looking Asian woman. She came up to me and she asked if I believed in God. At the time, I was kind of a pushover and I didn't like being stern and rude, so I responded back with yes. She proceeded to pull out a tablet and she started to tell me if I believe God is a woman and turned on a slideshow. I told her repeatedly no, but she insisted that I finish the video. When all this was going on, I was trying to walk away and she continued to follow me around the baby section. She handed me a card that had a handwritten address on the back, and she told me that her church was having a meeting sometime during that week, and I should attend. I told her okay and took the card, just to try and get her away from me. But she continued talking, asking about myself and my daughter, and continued to follow us. 
Just in perfect timing, my husband walked up and began talking to me, with the lady rushing away as soon as she saw him. I still didn't think anything of this until about six months later. So I'm scrolling on Facebook, and a friend from high school wrote this as her status. Please be careful at the e-colonial Walmart. There's an Asian woman walking around the Walmart asking people if God is a woman, and she's also giving out a fake address disguised as a church to be sex trafficked. She's accompanied by two men, and they're approaching women and children. Ladies, please be aware when out, especially at night and while you're with your children. If my husband wasn't with me or had showed up in that very moment, God only knows what would have happened to my daughter and I. So yeah, thank God for my husband. When I was 15 years old, I had one of the most bone-chilling and eye-opening experiences I've ever had to this day. This was almost a decade ago, and I've been smoking the devil's lettuce since before this story happened but I'll try to remember as many details as I can. I grew up in a small crime-ridden Appalachian city, and there were a lot of dodgy characters. Growing up in that type of environment, I was usually pretty good at handling these types of people, but this time it was all out of my control. It started on a fall night, in the most ridiculous place it could possibly start, at the local Walmart. My dad's sister and I were doing some midweek grocery shopping, and my sister and I were naturally acting crazy and making some fun of the local late night Walmart creatures, trying to make each other laugh. My sister spotted a guy down an aisle from us and pointed out that he looked like a stereotypical pedophile. And boy was she right. The guy was seriously giving lovely bones but in real life vibes. He had big glasses with thick frames, and a weird thin and greasy middle part in his hair. I can't remember everything he was wearing, but I remembered his oversized tan jacket. My sister and I giggled at him, and to this day, I don't even know if he noticed, or if he even noticed us before we noticed him. The rest of the shopping trip he kept popping up in the same aisles as us, which I didn't think much about. I was with my big scary dad, and this guy was also grocery shopping. Everything else was normal for the next few days, until I woke up in the middle of the night one night. I couldn't figure out what had woken me up, but I had the overwhelming feeling of being watched. Now my childhood home was haunted, but this felt different, it felt dirty. I couldn't go back to sleep, and I was really groggy the next day. Now, the cycle kept happening for weeks on end, and my mom kept blaming it on the amount of caffeine I would drink. Until one weekend, my parents went on a day trip to a town three or four hours away and left me all alone in the house. I was used to being home alone, and I usually relished in that feeling. But this time, it was different. I felt uncomfortable and kind of anxious. So I texted my friend who will call Mike for the story. I asked him to come pick me up so we could go smoke or hang out somewhere else. I walked out to his car and we took off, having a completely normal conversation, except Mike kept looking in his rearview mirrors. I asked him if he was okay and he said yes, it's just that this guy keeps following me and he's driving around like a maniac. When we hit a red light, I turned around to get a better look at this car, just to have it pull right beside my passenger window in a messy manic and scurry away. And what I saw chilled me to the bone and almost made me immediately break down. It was the man my sister and I joked about in the Walmart, and he was looking right at me. His jaw and teeth were totally clenched, and his eyes were empty and emotionless. As I started sobbing, he laid down his horn at us, making us jump. What the hell's going on? I remember Mike asking over and over again. But I couldn't even breathe or articulate the situation. Mike was pretty quick on his feet, and without explanation, just hightailed it to our local police station. 
We both went inside and talked to the head officer, who was actually one of our friend's dad. Mike had actually memorized the license plate number, and they ended up running a report, sending an officer out to look for his car. After talking to the officer, Mike had pointed out the man that had been parked across the street from my home, so they sent an officer to my house as well, and called my parents. The most horrifying thing about this was what happened next. When an officer arrived in my house, he found the man in my front yard digging through the bushes right outside my bedroom window. He was arrested, and after the scene had been inspected by the officers, the man had a crowbar, duct tape, zip ties, condoms, as well as a taser hidden in the bush right outside of my room. That's when my eerie feelings I'd been feeling for weeks finally made sense. My grandfather had always said that I was insanely intuitive, and this proved him right. It turns out this guy was a registered sex offender, and the state pressed charges along with my parents. Nothing in my life has ever been so traumatizing as this, but I guess the moral of the story is to always trust your gut whenever you feel something isn't right especially if it's waking you up in the middle of the night. I worked at an M&S store in the UK at the time the story is set. It's basically a fancy supermarket and more expensive than many other places. I'd been there for about two years, and on this day my shift was going like it always did. I was operating the till at the time, and we were in a slow period, so I was serving less customers. Now, I don't pay attention to every person I see in the store, and the bathroom area isn't even within my sight at all, so I can't keep an eye on everyone who passes through. Anyway, a woman approached me with a basket, and I got ready to serve her, but I noticed that she had a very concerned look on her face. She appeared nervous, and she sped up the closer she got to me. I switched into customer service mode, but before I could greet her, she asked me if I could help her. I initially thought that she was going to ask me to help find a product for her, which I'm not technically supposed to do, so I would have to explain that she'd have to find one of my colleagues on the shop floor because I couldn't leave the till unattended. I was just about to explain this when she then added, there's something wrong in the ladies' room. I wasn't expecting that, but again, I still couldn't leave the till unattended. I asked her if someone had an accident, but she just shook her head and then said, No, but there's something creepy written in there. I wasn't expecting to hear that, but I told her not to worry and we would sort it out. I buzzed one of my coworkers and the woman took them to the bathroom to see what was up. They were gone for like half an hour before my coworker came back, and I could tell by her facial expression she had something wild to tell me. I was expecting her to tell me that someone had shit on the floor and written a message in their own filth or something, but what she told me was even wilder, at least in my opinion. Again, the shop was still quiet, so my coworker came over and pulled out her phone, telling me to look at this. She showed me a photo of the ladies' bathroom, and someone had written, Place your sacrifice here, on the baby changing area. They did this in a light red marker, and they drew an upside down pinnacle underneath the words in a darker shade of red. It wasn't blood, my coworker just said it was a marker and moaned it was a nightmare to get off the white surface. She still had the toilets closed off because she was still trying to get it off completely and was taking a quick break to show me. She said that she had already told our manager who was scouring through CCTV to see if he could spot anything suspicious. He couldn't really see anything though, and we obviously don't have cameras in the bathrooms, and we don't know when the graffiti was drawn because it's really possible no one bothered to report it until the woman spoke to me. I understand why it made her uncomfortable, because although it was obviously just a troll, it made me feel uncomfortable too. The weird thing is though, our manager said everyone who went into the bathroom seemed normal. I know it's stereotypical, 
but all the women who went into the toilets that day just didn't seem like that type to do something like that. They were all well-dressed, behaving normally, etc. The toilets were also cleaned regularly, and all this occurred in the afternoon. So, it's quite ballsy to graffiti when you could be caught so easily. I wonder if they knew the store was quiet, and then snuck in and did what they did, then slipped back out. The whole situation was just so strange. It was eventually cleaned up, and when the lady who reported it came to pay for her shopping, she came to my till, and I thanked her for letting us know. She said that it freaked her out because she was pregnant herself, and so seeing something like that just upset her. I told her that was understandable, and it made me uncomfortable too, and that we'd try to find whoever did it. Really though, I knew that there wasn't much we could do other than clean it, but I said what I said to make her feel better. So yeah, we don't know who left the graffiti, but it was definitely one of the weirdest things I ever experienced working there. This happened just last year in my small town, and it was honestly the weirdest thing that's ever happened to me. The date was October 31st, 2022. Yeah, Halloween. The large grocery store I work for had recently lifted the ban on masks in their store if you were vaccinated, and we were also allowed to dress in costumes for our shift if we followed some simple rules and guidelines set by the company. I was dressed as a student of Hogwarts from the Harry Potter fandom. Not any of the main since I have short blonde hair with red streaks and sparkling green eyes. So when people asked me what I was dressed as, I just simply replied, I'm a Gryffindor sixth year studying for my nude exams and doing this muggle job to earn some extra money. The little kids that came in ate that right up. They loved it even more when I tapped their tree bags with my wand that I carried and made candy appear inside. Thank God the parents played along and distracted them long enough to allow me to perform the magic. But I never knew that cosmic force wanted to trick me on this night of nights, or at least that's how I saw it later. So my assistant manager who we'll call Claire had asked me to watch the four self-service lanes while she and the woman I was replacing, Stacy, could set up the tree table at the entrance of the store. We had this thing on Halloween from 5pm to 9pm that any child that came in with their parents dressed in a costume would get a bag of candies, as well as some coloring pages to take home. I agreed and I took up my position. About four minutes later, a man came with a basket full of stuff and began to ring it up. He seemed to struggle with some of the produce, so I walked over and said calmly and sweetly, Excuse me, sir, do you need any help? I should have never approached. He then rounded on me and growled. No, just get the fuck away from me and do your damn job, bitch. I took a step back and I was shocked. What the heck was his deal? I just said okay and I went to clean off the other three, which at the time were not being used. I finished and I saw him struggling. He'd rung up the same exact item three times, twice more than what he had. Hoping to be of help, I cautiously walked up, but before I could even say anything, he just turned and yelled. Stop fucking winging me! You're acting like I'm going to steal something! Again, I leaped out of the way like he might hit me. I then saw Claire walking towards me, and I quickly waved at her and then whispered. That guy right there? He's having some trouble, and I tried to ask if he wanted assistance, but he swore at me, and he said I was winging him. I don't know, but he's not making me feel safe here. He's been huffy like this ever since he walked up. Claire nodded and walked up to the man, asking if he needed help. The man raged at her as well, and then started saying that she was winging him as well. Claire then called her boss, our manager Bryce. As soon as the man saw Bryce coming, he got more redder in the face than I even thought was possible, and then he let fly, calling me and Claire things like sluts and whores, and that he wanted us fired immediately. I stood back with Claire, letting Bryce handle this jerk. 
Now, Bryce looks like he's 28, but he's actually 34, and he's calm but tough. He told the man that there was no reason to get mad like that, and that he could go to the service desk and finish checking out or he could leave. The man just screamed. I don't have to be treated like this! This is bullshit! Do you know who I am? I'm so rich I could buy this shit-ass store out and fire all of you! Bryce, whose expression hadn't even changed from the calm, stoic expression, stepped closer to the man and then said, Buddy, I don't care how rich you are. Get the hell out of my store. You're no longer welcome here. Leave your shit and get the hell out of here now before we call the cops on you. The man tried to argue that it was mine and Claire's faults, but Bryce just repeated what he said, with the man dropping his bags on the floor then storming out never to be seen again. Claire just looked at me and said, Are you okay? I just smiled at her and asked, Yeah, are you? To which we both just laughed. Halloween is a time for fun, where you can dress as almost anything or anyone you want. But some people don't need to. They go as Karens and Jerky Jacks every day of the year. I was at Walmart with my mom, and I really wanted to go buy some LOL dolls, but she was in line so she couldn't go with me. I had begged her to let me go by myself, because you ain't so smart when you're eight. She let me go reluctantly. I just want to say in advance that I don't blame her one bit for what happened. She's a good woman with a kind soul, and she trusted me enough to go by myself. She never made the same mistake again. I went to the toy section and I was looking around for those LOL dolls. When this guy, maybe in his mid-twenties, asked from a distance if I was looking for the Barbies, and he then told me the aisle that they were in. I was a little suspicious. I grew up hearing things in the news all the time since New Orleans isn't exactly the safest city. So I politely declined, and I went to where my toys were. I was choosing which one that I wanted to get, taking my sweet time, when I then felt something graze my butt. I didn't even think anything of it, because I didn't even know the role of butts back then, and I didn't see anything, so I just assumed it was just my imagination. It then happened again moments later, and I heard footsteps this time. I was starting to freak out internally but my little dumb self just kept looking. The next time, however, the guy didn't just slap my butt again. He came up to me and then grabbed me a bit, then slowly started lifting my skirt. I was at least wise enough to push him away and then run as fast as I could to my mom. I didn't know what sex was, though, so I was only a little shaken. When they started pressuring me for answers on what the guy looked like and stuff is when I really started crying. I should mention that I really hate being yelled at. At this time, the police had already came and were interrogating me, but I couldn't remember a thing. I felt like I was in trouble and just felt like my whole world was spinning. I've always been a good girl, so I wasn't used to getting yelled at at all. My dad came to the scene and then started yelling at the suspect they were interviewing. I begged him to stop because I wasn't sure if this was even the right guy, and he also seemed innocent, but matched the description I gave. The guy was taken away, and that was the last I heard of him. I really hope it was the right guy, but like I said, I don't even remember. I know I got away pretty lucky but it's scary to think what could have happened if I didn't run. I'm glad that I did. This is my mom's story, but I still feel partially guilty. It was around last year, the prime time of the pandemic. I didn't want to do schoolwork, so I went with my mom to go grocery shopping. But of course, like almost every teenager, I went into one store and got bored. So not wanting to go shopping anymore, I just told my mom that I wanted to stay in the car and that I could watch my sister. Although my mom said yes, 
my sister didn't want to stay in the car with me and started to throw a fit. Not wanting to have to listen to my sister complain the whole ride home, my mom just said whatever and took her in the store. After like 30 minutes in the car, my mom finally comes out of the store. I was just about to say, geez, took long enough as a joke, but I was then cut off by my mom saying, you really should have come in. Thinking something funny happened, I asked her why. What she said next froze me to the core, sending a chill down my spine. I think human traffickers were trying to steal Mary, Mary being my sister. I asked my eyes wide, looking at my sister oblivious to this fact. The following is what my mom said happened. They were strolling down the part of Walmart where sports balls and stuff were. There wasn't anyone other than them in the aisles, or so my mom thought. My mom got the feeling as if she was being watched. So my mom being smart, not to give it away that she was alert, then stops the car pretending to look at things on the shelf. Out of the corner of her eye, she saw two men around 5 foot 10 with hoodies and baseball caps on. She thought that it was creepy and started to walk away. That's when she then noticed that one of the men was really close to Mary and the other less than two inches behind her. My sister was only six years old, so my mom thought they were being really creepy towards her. My mom was just about to spin around to slap the dude behind her, but just before she does, she then thinks to herself to not let Mary out of her sight. My mom then picks up the pace and then gets to a part of the store where a few people are. She turns, and she noticed that they both stopped right in their tracks and were walking away. My mom sighed in relief, and then checked out. I've thought to myself often that if I'd gone in there with my mom and sister, they would have been more safe. I really wish I would have gone, but because of my own selfishness, I could have been the very reason my sister wouldn't be here now. My mom also changed by buying a gun to protect her and us. This might not be that scary to others, but for us, it was an absolute chilling experience. One that we definitely learned from. When I was in my early 20s, I went to Walmart for a grocery haul. I walk in and get me some McDonald's before I go shopping because we all know you can't go grocery shopping hungry. I smash my two McChickens, then go about shopping. I also want to mention that I'm a female. About 15 or so minutes later, I got what was coming to me. Some intolerable stomach pains and a bathroom trip just brewing. So I run to the bathroom in a panic, close the stall, and I let the storm begin. Now, there's only one other person in the bathroom with me in the stall to my left. The handicap stall. From the shoes, I'm thinking it's a little girl. So, as I'm going about my business, I'm looking down at my phone to pass the time. All of a sudden, I then see something in the upper corner of my eye. It was a phone at the top of the stall door in front of me. Not the handicap stall. And it had the camera facing me. There was an actual hand holding the phone. There was actually someone recording me taking a shit. The whole thing went by so quickly, but I was in an incredibly vulnerable position as you can imagine, and all I could think to do was scream. What the fuck are you doing? The person immediately runs off, and I hear the little girl in the stall beside me kinda jump off the toilet and run away as well. By the time I could wipe my ass and run out of the bathrooms, obviously whoever was recording me was gone. So I'm completely mortified, and I ask for one of the managers and tell them what happened. They weren't even concerned that someone was straight up recording me in the bathroom with my pants down and legs wide open for god knows how long. I tell them to please look at the cameras because I feel completely violated, and I'm also concerned for my safety. Within about 10 minutes, they return and they say that a little girl ran out of the bathroom shortly before me, and that it was probably just her joking around getting pictures of random people in the restroom. I actually argued with them, 
letting them know that I know it wasn't the little girl because she was in the stall next to me, and that she ran out after I yelled. They were pretty adamant that's who it was, because no one else went in before me or after me. I never ended up escalating it further with the Walmart manager. Looking back, I can't believe I was gaslighted into thinking it was some dumb kid. But the next few days when I really thought about it, I really realized that's not even possible. I came to the conclusion that there's a nasty poop-peeping pervert hiding in the supply closet in the bathrooms or something, taking videos of vulnerable women taking shits. I've been convinced of all these years that I'm probably out there on some website on the dark web. You know, for the people who have these nasty fetishes. Not long before that particular incident, I was followed by a car out of Walmart and nearly made it to my house before I realized. I then drove around just to make sure it was actually following me, and they definitely were. I got rid of them because I drove to a gas station, then screamed, This person's following me! Call the police! Once they heard what I was doing, they drove away. I never got a look at them, unfortunately, and I didn't file a police report either. I know these two incidents aren't related, but both of them creeped me the hell out. Needless to say, I haven't been back to that Walmart since. Hey everyone, I hope you all enjoyed these stories. If you ever want to submit your own, you can do so at southerncannibal.com. Have a good night everyone, and remember, to always, stay.